Imagine a world where everything is flawless and precise, where mistakes are non-existent. Perfectionism, the never-ending pursuit of flawlessness, is a captivating concept that, is, that both inspires and burdens individuals in their quest for excellence. Hello, my name is Angie. My name is Sam. And my name is Owen. These are our table of contents and how we structured our TMP. Merriam-Webster defines perfectionism as the doctrine that the perfection of moral character constitutes a person's highest good. In the eyes of the general public, perfect, per, perfectionism is perceived as a positive attribute that many possess, but this may not be the case. Perfectionism can lead to an all rigid, all or nothing thinking pattern where individuals see things as either perfect or a total failure leaving no room for mistakes or growth. Perfectionism has its upsides and its downsides, as it is multifaceted. A healthy perfectionist, as seen in the chart, strives for excellence, but still leaves room for flexibility, self-compassion, and an overall acceptance of mistakes as part of the learning process. However, in this day and age, perfectionism has spiraled down a much more negative path. As many as two in five kids are perfectionists, says Katie Ramison, who researches child development and perfectionism at West Virginia University. Perfectionism at its core is a problem much deeper than a simple chart and can infect even the most stable of minds. While striving for excellence can be admirable, perfectionists often experience a constant fear of failure or making mistakes. This fear can lead to an excessive stress, self-criticism, and anxiety. Perfectionists may also struggle with unrealistic expectations and a tendency to be overly critical of themselves and others. Understanding the allure and impact of perfectionism is crucial in navigating its complex dynamic and finding a balance between striving for greatness and embracing our imperfections. Together, my colleagues and I came up with the research question, to what extent does perfectionism affect quality of life? Amidst the aspects of perfectionism, its influence on mental health arises with some unfortunate negative outcomes. According to UPMC Health Week in their report on perfectionism, researchers link perfectionism to a variety of mental health disorders, including anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder, and a variety of eating disorders. While it may seem impossible to some, and perfectionism can affect even the most stable of minds. Because of this, many students and adults alike with perfectionism can experience a strain in communication as they attempt to meet deadlines they set for themselves. The strain in communication can lay an even bigger blow on an individual's mind as it leads to relationship strains and diminishing levels of self-esteem. From zero to hero, a perfectionist's expectations of themselves can either supersede the boundaries or fall low below zero. The perfectionist scale, as seen here, is extremely unbalanced and in part is the reason for an individual's low self-esteem. According to Thomas Curran, social and personality psychologist, young people internalize this expectation and depend on them for their self-esteem. And when they fail to meet them, as they invariably will, they'll criticize themselves for not matching up. To compensate, they strive to be perfect. For any individual suffering with perfectionism, the low self-esteem not only contributes to themselves, but those around them. As they continue to strive for excellence, perfectionists begin to isolate themselves from the world around them, causing loved ones to feel concern and worry for them. Ultimately, perfectionism is not only limited to just that, but also influences achievement levels. Perfectionism at its core becomes an unbearable task and can place strain on achievement levels regardless of age. Will Coldwell, in his article with The Guardian, describes the impact perfectionism has on accomplishing a task, both in sports and in academics. Within a study of cyclists highlighted in the article, it concluded that those who score high in perfectionism begin to give them to the race after being told they failed a particular goal. For most individuals, being told they failed a goal fail something is something that they can dismiss. But for perfectionists, the possibility of failure becomes an impediment to personal progress and diminishes overall work ethic. These individuals are reluctant to take on new challenges and are more likely to give up on their goals. The problems rooted behind perfectionism do not stop here, as perfectionists will lose motivation within their negative mindset. Within an article from Very Well Mind, the author states, the pressure of feeling the need to perform perfectly and the fear of failure can take an emotional toll on a perfectionist. It can feel easier to avoid doing a project or a presentation till it's absolutely necessary. This behavior from perfectionists is ultimately destructive. It can contribute to many mental health illnesses and challenges. 
One successful way to overcome perfectionism is with the use of trained counselors in the workforce. Counselors are trained professionals who can provide mental health support to individuals struggling with perfectionism. They can provide guidance, coping strategies, and a safe space where employees can express their concerns and challenges. Therapy is often used, used to help treat these individuals as perfectionism has a high correlation to anxiety, depression, burnout, and eating disorders. Therapy can allow individuals with perfectionistic tendencies to reframe their thoughts and set reasonable and attainable goals. Vital Buford, the author of Addicted to Perfect, shared his compelling journey through years of perfection and addiction. Buford's company, The Harding Group, conducted research with their social research lab at the University of Northern Colorado to learn more about the effects of perfectionism. The Harding Group concluded that 92% of people suffer, some, suffer from some sort of form of perfectionism in the workforce. Negative perfectionism affects relationships, productivity, and management. Our proposed solution for counselors in the workforce ensures and enhances the overall well-being of patients struggling with mental health related concerns due to perfectionism. Some of the implications and limitations that we came up with for this alternate solution are as follows. Counselors in the workforce offer tailored advice to individuals, helping them understand the root causes of their perfectionism and develop coping strategies for a, healthy, a healthier mindset. This ensures a comprehensive and targeted approach to well-being. They provide individual therapy or group counseling sessions to address perfectionism-related concerns. Counselors help individuals explore the root causes of perfectionism develop coping strategies, and offer a safe and confidential space to discuss concerns and seek guidance. Their support is crucial for timely intervention in mental health issues, including negative perfectionism, which can impact personal well-being and work performance. However, counselors in the workforce may have limited time to adjust, address perfectionism thoroughly with each individual, which can make it challenging to explore underlying causes and provide comprehensive support. Perfectionism is a complex issue that varies from person to person and can be influenced by personal experience, experiences, societal pressure, or underlying mental health conditions. Not all individuals may be ready to acknowledge or address their perfectionistic tendencies, limiting progress in counseling. Additionally, according to an extensive article, author Margaret S. Hill notes through positive reframing, for example, students can come to view academic setbacks as learning opportunities and to focus on what has been accomplished rather, rather than obsessing over failures. As educators begin to utilize tools to help students change their perspective of academic accomplishments, aspects of negative perfectionism are pushed away, not only in present times, but in the future. Introducing coping strategies and resilience building techniques early on equips students with the tools to manage setbacks and failures. This proactive approach, approach helps in preventing maladaptive perfectionism. Furthermore it's, oh, furthermore, it's important to know that while both counselors in the workforce and early intervention in schools can, can support individuals dealing with perfectionism, the approaches and intensity of intervention may vary based on the specific needs and resources available in each setting. It is beneficial to have a multifaceted approach that combines the expertise of both counselors and school professionals to address perfectionism effectively. However, early intervention in schools can be considered better for addressing perfectionism in certain aspects. School counselors and psychologists focus on identifying and addressing perfectionism in students at an early age. They play a crucial role in recognizing perfectionistic tendencies and providing support. This involves implementing pre prevention and intervention strategies to help students develop healthy attitudes toward achievement and management of perfectionistic tendencies. Next. While, in, while early intervention in schools can be beneficial in addressing perfectionism, there are limitations to consider. Not every student responds the same way to intervention. Some may require more personalized approaches, and what works for one student may not work for another. For many individuals, perfection may be a tough pill to swallow. But by understanding its impact on the individual and their mental health, we can grow our world from a much more negative to a much more positive one. Let us strive to applaud those individuals, not for their unrealistic expectations, but their, but their accomplishments and the journey that got them there. And just as how Elrod said, personal growth is about progress, 
not perfection. Thank you. Um, Sam, give one specific way that you're thinking changed as a result of learning about Owen's findings. My thinking changed after learning about Owen's findings because it allowed me to fully understand the topic of perfectionism. Having a scientific lens, Owen's lens allowed, allowed a multifaceted approach. One piece of evidence that prompted me to fully understand and grasp the topic was an article by the American Psychology Association in which Owen highlights how a perfectionist will struggle to, man to manage their levels of self-esteem due to the constant need of approval. This information, although not researched in my own article due to it being about futuristic effects, it fully allowed me to understand how other aspects of perfectionism can fully cause an individual to struggle, as the battle with low self-esteem can affect their relationships as well. Um, Angie, what is an example of a compelling argument from one of your peers' individual reports that you decided to exclude from your team presentation and why? An example of a compelling argument from Sam's IRR that we decided to exclude from our team presentation is Christy Ashwanden's article on perfectionism. Despite its quality, its content would have introduced redundancy. The key arguments and insights presented in Ashwanden's article overlapped with information already covered by my peers, making it unnecessary to reiterate similar points. In the interest of maintaining conscious conciseness and avoiding repetition, I chose to prioritize diverse perspectives and data that contributed uniquely to our overall understanding of perfectionism. While Ashwanden's article provided valuable insights and its exclusion aimed to ensure our team presentation remained focused, engaged, and presented and presented a comprehensive view of the multifaceted issue of perfectionism. Okay, and Owen, if you had another team member, what other perspectives or limitations could they have researched that would have made a useful contribution to the project? Having another team member, another limitation or perspective they could have research on could have been a political aspect. Deciding on our primary solution as early intervention schools, we have limit, little limitations on that solution. Having less lenses that are social, scientific, and futuristic. However, having, a dish, an dish, having an individual to research a political lens can allow the audience and ourselves to grasp a better understanding of possible limitations to our solution. In turn, having this lens will advance our presentation, allowing it to seem more realistic by having more solutions. Okay, thank you.